<clears throat> All right, Shalom. First, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachak Wadash, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. Um, so, like, let me do this screen share real quick. Hopefully it comes up nice and clear. But um, basically, you know, we're just going to go into uh, a little bit of uh, um, history, okay? Just, um, <clears throat> you know, concerning the uh, the the final uh, um, or the last the last bit of the uh, the Assyrian Empire, okay? And, um, you know, really the, the early rise of the Neo-Babylonian Empire, okay? And the death of Josi uh, Josiah, okay? And as you can see in the title, the the, the, the king of Egypt, all right, Neko. So, <clears throat> you know, we're going to get right into it because what you had happened was that you have uh, um, uh, after after Ashur Banapal, he was one of like the last, you know, main major kings in the Assyrian Empire. You had it sort of going to, you know, a, a sort of a, a civil civil war kind of a, a, a turmoil. So things weren't really running uh, smoothly as it started to collapse and crumble, okay, which led to the revolt, okay, by Nabopolassar, okay, which was the father of uh, Nebuchadnezzar II, okay. Now, this revolt, okay, it wasn't it wasn't just a one-day thing, of course, all right, but this revolt turned into, into much more because with the help of Cyraxes I, all right, a, a, a Median king, okay, Nabopolassar, which, you know, was a king of, of Babylon, was able to, with the help of uh, of the meat of the Medes and the Persians and all of them, able to take down the uh, the Assyrian Empire. Okay, so being that the Assyrian Empire was weak at the time, all right, they around six uh, uh around uh, six sixteen, okay, BC, they they sort of had that made that alliance, okay, between Babylon and and uh, 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 Media, okay, and then together. They they basically went up they went up in there which let me uh pull up a map make it easier to understand let's do a fall of the Syrian Empire okay where's what's a good one uh, So like, I'm trying to see if I can find a uh, a good uh, mm. okay. This might be a good one. As a matter of fact, hold on. Let me just look up a Syrian Empire. Okay, good. This is this is a good one. All right. Let's see if it'll come up bigger. Okay, so here you can see <clears throat> you had the Assyrian Empire. All right, and um, you have Media over here, and you have ba Babylonia over here. Okay, now after after Ashur, which used to be the capital, went down. Okay. They, um, they, um, the Assyrians, all right, and you know, in the scramble, they they changed the capital to Nineveh, okay, which Nineveh got taken down, all right, by um, uh, the Babylonian and the Medes, okay. So you had you had Nabopolassar, okay, which Nabopolassar wasn't a Babylonian, he was an Assyrian, okay, but you see, at the time, let's say Assyria, because they, they used to go back and forth, so if, when during the, the uh, the time of the Assyrian Empire, the Assyrian king would also be called the king of Babylon. Okay. So uh Nabopolassar being at the time the, the 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 ruler of Babylon, okay, before it became that that empire, that neo neo Babylonian Empire, okay, which Neo meaning new. Okay, so you had what happened here was that you have uh Babylon and Media, they took down Nineveh in six twelve. Okay, 612 BC, they took down Nineveh, and then the Assyrians, okay, 
they they basically uh, 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 ran all right to Haran. Okay, they 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 uh, retreated to Haran, made that sort of like the the last uh, uh, other stronghold or the last other area to go. Okay, which you had at this time you had um, Ashur uh, Ubalit the second. Okay, he was the one you could you could call the uh, the king at the time. All right, of and this is why the Assyrian Empire is crumbling. Okay, as it's going down. Okay, so they they move into Haran. Okay, but in uh, 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 around 609 BC, Haran was was the uh, um, uh, the Babylonians and the Medes. All right, laid siege to Haran. Okay, and took it down. And so what happened? They then scrambled and ran to, to uh, uh, Carchemish, which is what we're about to read right now. So keep in mind, now you had Egypt, all right, which was a, a vassal state of the Assyrian Empire, because as you can see here, this is the Assyrian Empire, but they also had Egypt in there, okay? And Egypt was really coming to, to, to their help because they were they were uh, uh, allies. So Egypt was, was coming to their, their help all right, so we'll read it. This is Second uh, Chronicles chapter 35, verse 20. It says, After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Carchemish by Euphrates. Okay, when you look when you look at the map again, Carchemish is right up here. This is the Euphrates River. Okay, so Carchemish being right up here, Carchemish was a uh, like a stronghold or a city under the control of the Egyptians. So what you had was the uh, the remnants or what was left of the uh, Assyrians, all right, fled over there to, to Carchemish, okay, and um, you had you had Necho Necho the second, king of Egypt. He was he was coming over here to come uh, assist them, you know, come give them help, because mind you, you still had uh, uh, Nabal Palassa and and uh, uh, which at this time it was um, 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 Nebuchadnezzar because. By the time that they had taken down uh, uh, um, Carchemish around 605 BC, Nabopolassar, which was the father of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar II, had died. So the one ruling was, uh, or the one in charge was Nebuchadnezzar II. Okay? So here it is. You have uh, 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 Necho, king of Egypt, coming up here to uh, uh, Carchemish. Okay? He's, he's trying to make his way up here to, to, to come give them that aid and support. So this is what we're reading. So it says here, um, to fight against Carchemish by Euphrates, and Josiah went out against them, because Josiah was king of Judah, and and that's right here. But in order to get from from um, from Egypt to Carchemish, Necho had to go through through uh, uh, through through Judah or through the land of Israel, right? So it says, but he sent ambassadors to him. This was uh, Josiah sent ambassadors to Necho, saying, what have Oh, um, Salakia, it was um, Necho sent ambassadors to Josiah, all right? Because like it says here, as Josiah or the king of Egypt came up to fight against Carchemish by, by Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. But he sent ambassadors to him saying, what have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? He's basically saying, look, man, I'm not coming for you, you know? We don't we don't got beef right now. I, I, I like I, What I'm trying to get to is up there. I just got to go through here, see? So he says, I am not come against thee this day, but against the house wherein I have war. So he was, where was he going? He was going, which we're going to read it here, all right? But he was going up here to Carchemish, all right? To bring that support, like the reinforcements. It says, um, for, for, for God or for the Most High commanded me to make haste, forbear thee from meddling uh, with God who is with me that he destroy thee not. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself that he might fight with him. So Josiah was like, nah, you ain't, you ain't getting through here. All right. And hearken not unto the words of Necho from the mouth of the Most High and came to fight in the Valley of Megiddo. So when you look that up, you, you uh, it tells you, as a matter of fact, let's do that. All right. The Battle of Megiddo, which I believe this was around 609 BC, uh, BC of Megiddo. Yep, 609. So this is the Battle of Megiddo. It says, the Battle of Megiddo is recorded as having taken place in 609 BC 
when Pharaoh Necho II of Egypt led his army to Carchemish, northern Syria, all right, right up here. Because you have Syria right here. This is north, north of it. It says, um, to join with his allies the fading Neo-Assyrian Empire against the surging Neo-Babylonian Empire. See? And they they had help from the Medes, all right? And and you had uh, 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 the Scythians and the uh, the Persians and all, but mainly because you had the Median the Median Empire, all right, and then you had the, uh, Bab the like it says the Neo Babylonian Empire. So Necho was what coming up to to uh, to come support his allies, which were the fading Neo Assyrian Empire, because the Assyrian Empire was going down, man. That the time was up. It says um, this required passing through territory controlled by the kingdom of judah and Ju and the judean king josiah refused to let uh the egyptians pass or pass okay so as we're reading here it tells you uh josiah came to fight all right against uh, necho the king of egypt in the valley of megiddo that was what the battle of megiddo we're going to come back to that but let's read a little a little bit more in here it says and the archers shot at at king josiah and the king said to his servant, so he got hit, have me away for I am sore wounded. His servants therefore took him out of that chariot and put him in the second chariot that he had. And they brought him to Jerusalem and he died and was buried in one of the sepulchers of his fathers and all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. All right. So basically Josiah went to war, but you know, he, he got put to death. Okay. But his his death was significant. Why? Because let's let's keep reading here. It says, um, resulting in Josiah's death and his kingdom becoming a vassal state of Egypt. The battle is recorded in the Hebrew Bible, the Greek first Ezra, and the writings of Josephus. Um, it says, while Necho II gained control of the kingdom of Judah, the combined Assyrian Egyptian forces failed to defeat the Babylonians after which Assyria largely ceased to exist as an independent state. Now, the reason Josiah's, Josiah fighting with, with uh, Necho at the Battle of Megiddo was important, the reason he, his, his death was also important was because though they lost all right, that war, what they did was it slowed down uh, uh, Necho, the king of Egypt, on his way to, to Carchemish. So he didn't get there in time, all right? Although he got there, it was it was already it was you could say too little too late. All right. So um let's read the Battle of Carchemish. The Battle of Carchemish was fought around or about 605 BC, and at this time you had uh Nebuchadnezzar II, who was now uh you know king of Babylon. It says between the armies of Egypt allied with the remnants of the army of the uh, former Assyrian Empire against the armies of Babylonia allied with the medes persians and scythians see so you had uh, uh um egypt which was allied to the, the remnants or the army of the of the assyrians and they were they were uh, fighting against babylonia and the medes the persians and the scythians it says uh when assyria when the assyrian capital nineveh was overrun by the medes scythians babylonians and their allies in 612 bc because remember they they, they moved the capital to, a, uh, to Nineveh, but that got taken down in 612, okay? It says the Assyrians moved their capital to Haran. So after Nineveh got taken down, they then moved it to Haran. When Haran was captured by the alliance, just talking about the Babylonians and, you know, the Medes and the rest of them, in 609 BC, ending the Assyrian Empire, because uh, what they did was they they, they sieged, they, uh, they besieged Haran, okay, and eventually took it down. It says, ending the Assyrian Empire, the remnants of the Assyrian army joined Carchemish, a city under Egyptian rule on the Euphrates River, which is uh, right here. So the uh, capital, which they moved to Nineveh after it got taken down in 612, they then moved it to Haran. That got taken down in 609. Then the remnants from there that survived fled to Carchemish. Because remember, they were allies with who? Egypt and Carchemish was a, a city under Egyptian rule, so they went there. All right. Um, it says a city under Egyptian rule on the Euphrates River, 
Egypt, a former vassal state of uh, Salakia, a former vassal of Assyria. A vassal is like a, a, let me just get the full definition, but it's sort of like similar to what you could say a province. Okay. Uh, vassal, let's see what they do. of the stream stop still going okay i think i think we're good. my connection is might have dropped for a second all right so it says vassal all right a holder of land by feudal tenure or conditions of homage and allegiance a person in a country or a uh, subordinate position to another okay uh let's see what other synonyms or some other words they have here mm. Okay, let's see vassal state. A vassal state is any state that, is, that has a mutual obligation to a superior state or empire in a status similar to that of a vassal in the feudal, sy uh, feudal system in medieval Europe. The obligations often included military support in exchange, in exchange for certain privileges. So after you were taken over, you were sort of subject, you know, to that empire. Okay, like it says, mutual obligations, all right, to a superior state or empire. So in this case, that would have been Assyria, all right, when they were in rulership, and Egypt would have, was, was that vassal. So it says, um, a former vassal of Assyria was allied with the Assyrian king, Ashur Ubalit II, and marched in 609 BC to his aid against the Babylonians. See? The Egyptian army of Pharaoh Necho II was delayed at Megiddo by the forces of Josiah of Judah. Josiah was killed and his army defeated at the Battle of Megiddo. And this is what we just read in 2 Chronicles. All right. Um, the Egyptians and Assyrians together crossed the Euphrates and laid siege to Haran, which they failed to retake. They then retreated to, north, uh, to northwestern Assyria uh, in what is today uh northeastern syria because remember um this was haran and it was already taken down now it was was under rule okay by by uh uh, uh um, babylon babylon okay or babylonia whatever you want to call it okay so they try to take it back but they they got they they, they got they got their word cut out for them you can say okay so because at this time it was already too late and the Lord had set it to where the next rulers were who? They are the Babylonians. Okay. Or, or I should say the Bab it was the Babylonian Empire. You know, when you read in Daniel the seventh chapter or, or Daniel the second chapter, the first was uh uh the first beast, okay, was that was the uh, uh the Assyrian Empire, all right, which then uh uh, uh became the uh, the Babylonian Empire, okay. So this was that process of of it of the Assyrian Empire's fall leading into the rise of the Neo Babylonian Empire. Okay, so let's read. Uh, let's read some more. It says the Egyptians met the full might of uh, the Babylonian and Median army led by Nebuchadnezzar II at Carchemish, where they co uh, where the combined Egyptian and Assyrian forces were destroyed. All right, Assyria ceased to exist as an independent power and Egypt retreated and was no longer a significant force in the ancient Near East because now the power was, or, or the force or the rulership was now uh, 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 the uh, Babylon. But it wasn't just Babylon because you also had uh, the Median Empire ruling at that, at, at that same time, okay? So when we talk about the Medo-Persian Empire, remember, the Median Empire was there at the time of the Babylonian Empire. They had an alliance, okay? So, so they weren't going to war with each other. It wasn't later on until Darius the Mede, who then took down, uh, 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 he took out Belshazzar, all right, but the king at that time was Nabonidus. So that was when the, the, the Medes sort of was like, you know, I bet. Now it's time, we've we taken, we taken over Babylon, all right? And then after Darius the Mede, you had Cyrus the Persian. That was when the, uh, the Persian Empire basically came up. That's why you have that Medo-Persian Empire, which was after the Babylonian Empire. 
okay so um it says here babylonia reached its economic peak after 605 bc okay now um we're gonna read okay about that that battle okay of uh the battle of of um of Carchemish, which Jeremiah uh, uh, has spoke of. Okay, this is Jeremiah chapter forty-six, verse one. And this is why you gotta you gotta go into history because if you don't know the history, when you're reading a scripture like this, you're think you're just you're you're only you're picturing something else. You know, you're you're seeing names that you might not be familiar with. Okay, but you're just thinking, oh yeah, it was just one of those battles. You know that that Israel had or the battles that took place. But this actually happened in history. So if you know the secular history, you it, it's you got people going around saying the Bible is a fairy tale, is made up, is written by man. Well, it's 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 historical book because the things we're reading of, all right, in the Bible, guess what? There's the same account in history. Okay, this is why it's important to understand the history. So this is Jeremiah forty six and one, the word of Yahweh which came to Jeremiah the prophet against the Gentiles against egypt against the army of pharaoh necho king of egypt which was by the river euphrates in carchemish all right as we just read the battle of carchemish which nebuchad uh well it says nebuchad chad reza all right which that that's talking about nebuchadnezzar the second king of babylon smote in the fourth year of jehoiakim the son of josiah king of uh king of judah it says, order ye the buckler and shield and draw near to battle. Harness the horses and get up ye horsemen and stand forth with your helmets, furbish the spears, put on the, the uh, brigandines, which is armor. All right. Wherefore have I seen them dismayed and turned, uh, turned, away, uh, uh, turned away back? And their mighty ones are beaten down and are fled apace and look not back. For fear was round about, for fear was round about, saith the Lord. And this is talking about the Egyptians. Because when they went to uh, uh, that, that battle of, of uh, Carchemish, they lost. Okay? Like it says, the Egyptians met the full might of the Babylonian and Median army led by Nebuchadnezzar II at Carchemish, where the combined Egyptian and Assyrian forces were destroyed. But... Let's read the records of the battle because it's gonna link it. It's gonna link up here. It says, um, "It says, for fear was round about, saith the Lord, let not the swift flee away, nor the mighty man escape. They shall stumble and fall toward the north by the river Euphrates." Okay. Now, this is the record of the battle. It says that the Nebuchadnezzar Chronicle now housed in the british museum claims that nebuchadnezzar crossed the river to go against the egyptian army which lay in carchemish this is this carchemish is the same thing as uh carchemish with a c it's just uh, spelled differently here it says they fought with each other and the egyptian army withdrew before him let's read that again okay it says um wherefore have i seen them dismayed and turned away and their mighty ones are beaten down and they are fled apace. Let's look up a pace. All right. It says flight, refuge, place of escape, flight, refuge, place of escape. So they fled. All right. And we just read that right here and we're going to keep reading it. Okay. So it says the Egyptian army withdrew before him. We're talking about. Egypt uh, against uh, uh, Babylon, which we know we know there were more players in here, but the main the main two as we're reading right now. Okay, we read it again. Let not um, it says, wherefore have I seen them dismayed and turned away back, and their mighty ones are beaten down and are fled apace and look not back for fear was round about, saith the Lord. All right, let's keep reading. It says he accomplished their defeat decisively as for the rest of the egyptian army which had escaped from the defeat so quickly that no weapon had reached them <laughs> in the district of hamath so they did they hit flight okay like it says and are fled apace and look not back so they were gone 
for fear was round about, saith the Lord. Let not the swift flee away. Swift. Let's look up swift. Let's see what we got here. Swift light uh fleet swift one who is swift so they 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 hit they hit they, look man they were they were they were fleeing all kinds of ways right we're reading it again the records of the battle he accomplished their defeat decisively as for the rest of the egyptian army which escaped the defeat so quickly as we read in jeremiah swift okay let not the swift flee away nor the mighty man escape they shall stumble and fall toward the north by the river Euphrates. Let's keep reading. So quickly that no weapon had reached them in the district of Hamath, okay, the Babylonian troops overtook and defeated them so that not a single man escaped to his own country. Let's read this again. Let not the, the swift flee away, nor the mighty man escape. Okay. They shall stumble and fall toward the north by the river of the Euphrates. Read it again. Because repetition is the father of skill. It has to sink in. Okay. It says, um, as for let me let me make sure. All right, it is good in here. Okay. It says, uh, do 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 do. The Babylonian troops overtook and defeated them so that not a single man escaped to his own country. At that time, the book Nebuchadnezzar conquered the whole area of Hamath. The battle is also mentioned and described in the Bible in the book of Jeremiah, as we're reading right here. So wait, this is history. It's, it's telling you that this historical account, the Battle of Carchemish, is written in the Bible. But but tell me, what in history is true and the Bible is, is a lie? It's, it, it's, I just linked it up right now. You know? So really, if so, for those who come out, oh, well, the Bible's not real. When you read it. They ain't even read it, and they don't understand it, but they're able to speak all these different things. That's why, uh, uh, oh, man, let me see if I can find this precept real quick. Uh, natural. All right, really, they speak out of ignorance, Okay. Second Peter chapter two, verse twelve. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the thi of of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. They don't understand it. They ain't never read it, but they're able to talk all this smack about it. Okay, you don't even know the story, but you're already picking a side. How? But let's go back to this. All right. Yeah. So that was. Uh, 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 we stopped at verse verse six. Okay. So let's finish here in the Battle of Carchemish. All right. Uh, like it says here, uh, described in the Book of Jeremiah, the battle mentioned in Second Chronicles thirty five and twenty to twenty seven. Um, do 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 do. It's not the same. The event referred to there is the Battle of Megiddo six oh nine B C, which occurred four years earlier, also near Carchemish. So what they're saying is. This what we read here, which we know that already. What we read here in in, um, in Second Chronicles, the Battle of Megiddo is not the same as the Battle of Carchemish. Okay, the Battle of Megiddo was the battle between Josiah, okay, against uh, uh, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, and the Battle of Carchemish was between the Egyptian uh, 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 forces along with with the uh, remnants of the Assyrian uh, forces against the uh, Babylonian and the Median forces. That was the Battle of Carchemish. So that's why it's, it's saying here that it's not the same. All right, what you read about here in Second Chronicles. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Okay, that was, that was, that's basically it on that. Okay, but hey, you know, just, it's all in there. Okay, it's all in, 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 in the history. You just look it up, man. Okay. You know, look it up because it's all in there, man. And, and that's, that's why, Hey, that's why the scriptures tell you. Okay. Um, Second Timothy two fifteen. It says, "Study to show thyself approved unto the Most High, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." Okay. Now, when you go into the word dividing, it says. Um, 
It says a, a cut straight, a cut straight away is to proceed on right paths, hold a straight course equivalent to doing right, to make straight and smooth, to handle a right, to teach the truth directly and correctly. Okay, so you have to study in order to be able to do that, man, because you can't teach something you don't know. All right, because then you just be winging it. Okay, and the scriptures already tell you about that, man. All right, so you gotta, you gotta, uh, 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 uh you gotta study, man. Okay, and that's why this book is so, is so heavy because it has history, laws, prophecy. Okay, so that validates it, man. Just like you would pick up a history book and read about different dates and time periods. Just because in the scriptures you won't see 605 BC or this da, da, da BC, but how do you how do you you, you use the names and the events? Because it, it does have names in there. Carchemish, that that the, that actually happened. So now you can say, okay, when you look up in history, all right, what happened here at this time? All right, we know the key players. Okay, we know it's it mentioned the Book of Nezer, Okay, like we read in here. Okay, it mentioned the Book of Nezer and Pharaoh Necho. And then Carchemish. Okay, let's look that up. What happened here? Then it'll give you the dates. It'll give you the times. So you know what happened, at, at, you know, what was going on at this time. And you're able to link it. Okay. But, um, yeah, like I said, I'm Andy here. Okay, that's pretty much it. All right. Um, you know, Lord willing, you know, this was at a final to the elect. Okay. And it's, it's definitely good to to, uh, uh, to study, man. Okay. Because these are this is our book. Okay. This is our book, man. So we gotta we gotta know the content that's within it. Okay, but with that, I hope this was edifying unto the elect, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Until next time, Shalom.